Nigeria is presently experiencing an electricity outage. And guess what? The government and the National Union of Electricity Employers have a hand in this. And unemployed people in Nigeria might begin to get stipends from the government until they secure employment. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. Nigeria has been shoved into a nationwide electricity blackout due to the strike and backed upon by members of the National Union of Electricity Employees. The, Nigeria, the union actually stated that the reasons for the strike is non-payment of the entitlements of 2,000 workers of the defunct power holding company of Nigeria, PHCN, who were laid off when the company was privatized, short payment for over 16 months. And, the conditions of service for workers of electricity companies. Now, joining us to have this conversation is Daniel Odupe. He's a lawyer. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for joining us um, for to have me. this conversation. Now, uh, I'd like to start by asking. I mean, I'm sure you did. You didn't have lights last night. Obviously. On a normal day, we still have you know light issues, but it was a nationwide blackout. I had everybody calling me to say, "Do you have lights? Do you notice that there's no light?" And this is something that we've not experienced in such a long time. How did you feel yesterday when you saw that message saying we were not going to have power? Um, it was something so different, really, because the truth is that our record has not been good in terms of power. You know, most times we we don't get to have light. But what made the difference was the fact that you know many other persons, like you said, did not have light too, and for the first time we got to know. Well, I wouldn't say for the first time, but you know, it's, it's a rare occurrence for us to know, for us to get to know why, because you know, they don't get to go on strike often. You know, sometimes what, the other thing we've always experienced is um, the system breakdown. You know, the whole system will just completely break down, down, they won't be part. You know, but this one, this was was man-made, and that's what made it different. But really, in you know, the sight of generator is something that we are almost used to now in Nigeria. So it wasn't something totally so you know, totally different for me. I mean. But there seemed to be an outrage because. For Nigerians, yes, the, light, the power system might not be so great, but when you hear that the people who have not been giving you such great power are literally going on strike, of course, it makes you wonder, especially that we're getting close to the Yuletide season. People were already beginning to wonder how they were going to take care of themselves. But let's move on to the part where a person is laid off and the entitlements are not paid years down the line we're still talking about it. And I've not seen any camaraderie as good as what we've seen displayed by all of the electricity distribution companies. So because right now power has been privatized, but there was a camaraderie that was shown by saying, we stand by these people who have been laid off and we want something to be done. And by this morning, I heard that you know they called up the strike. Why do you think that it's such a problem for us in this country to pay up anything that we owe in terms of government? I think leadership is a huge, huge challenge for us. I think management, we do very poorly, especially in the public space. We, do, we perform you know, very poorly. If you look at other sectors outside of politics, we, when, when everything is public, we don't do well. We don't manage it well. We don't follow the rules. We don't follow the books. We just there's so much arbitrariness. There's so much um, disorderliness. I don't know. But when why we it's, say it's when just... we say leadership, because the truth is, it is not a politician who is running everything. Yes, he might be at the helm of affairs, but there are people, government workers, who are either directors or permanent secretaries who are supposed to be involved in making sure that these payments are made. Should the government be taking the blow alone on this one? Or is this not a, a, an attempt by other people who work in the system to make the government look bad? I'm just asking. No, Marianne, let's not excuse the government. The box stops on their table. And let's not, this is not some, this is a nationwide affairs. You, some, you privatize the sector and then 
Because, I mean, let us not even start opening the, 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 the worms in that sector. Oh, please, let's there, open it. There, there's so much not going right with the sector ah, already. Let's open it. That's now, if, what you now, <laughs> if you now add this to it, I mean, the truth is, the bug stops on their table. They, they make this decision. You know, you are the one who decided to privatize. I mean, even, if, let's assume that you are right. Let's assume that, you know, certain, you know, civil servants somewhere are not doing what they're supposed to do, and that's why this is happening. As a leader, as the person who is at the end of as the minister of power, as the president of the country, as, as BPE, it is your responsibility to make sure that people do not suffer unjustly, to make sure that the, the entitlement and enrollment of people are paid to them. You, you cannot say, oh, you know, that's your work, that's your duty. So I think we'll be making a mistake if you want to excuse them. Even if they have been sabotaged or somebody has been corrupt somewhere, it is still their responsibility. They're supposed to make sure that the right things are done. You know, so we cannot, and, and if you think about it, you know, the box stops on their table, you know, they wield the political power. They are elected. These guys are civil servants. They give, these guys get directed from them. S sincerely speaking, for me, I do not think that anybody is not in that. I think it's just a reflection of the laxity in the system, of the disorderliness, of, you know, just our, our way as, as a people. Six years later, these guys were disengaged. In fact, the name changed in 2013 from Power Holding Company of Nigeria. 2,000 disengaged workers. 2,000, not 1,000. 2,000. And... They also have accused gen generate, um, companies of, uh, uh, of refusing to sign conditions of service and rules of engagement, adding that even the distribution companies were also denying the retirement benefits of some electricity workers. So even the private guys uh, have a hand in it. Now, let's not forget some of the people who worked in power holding were retained by these electricity distribution companies but some of them were laid off. Now they're accusing the GENCOs and DISCOs of wrongdoing. So it's not just the government. When we go into this privatization, yes, we appreciate the fact that we have GSMs and NITEL isn't working but well. There's GLOW and there's the rest of them. Uh, we also have this GENCOs and DISCOs. Could there not have been a clear cut agreement of sorts? I don't know how agreements are drawn. You should know about that that clearly states in fine print what should be done and what sh must be done so that we don't have these kind of situations because this is an imbroglio not just between the government but also with Jenkos and discos. What kind of agreements were drawn in you know, having this kind of um, privatization? You're right, Marianne. And to answer this question, um, I'd like to, because in my opinion, I think the best things that work in this nation are things that are privately run. That's the truth, you know. If you see quality leadership, quality management, if you think things are done smoothly, find out it is usually not in the public space. Private people are doing well. Now, you know, in the banking sector, for example, or in the private sector generally, every now and then there are mergers, there are restructuring, acquisition. What happened in the private sector is not far from that. Something 100% belongs to the government. And then move from the government to the hands of private. So because among private citizens, that happens all the time. You know, two companies merge, you know, there's acquisition here and there. And when you do that, you sign agreements. And one of the key elements of the agreement, the various agreements you sign, the ones that co co covers the contracts of, of the workers, every worker is supposed to be accounted for. You know, when having major, the, the rights of employees in a major is something that you, you must take care, you must take caution to make sure that you adequately cover it is it's, it's, not, it's not done for you not to do that properly because i mean you, because what you have between somebody who works an employee and an employer is a contract so if you want to change anything then you must pay attention to the fact that there's already an existing contract otherwise if you don't do that that means you're going to be you know you're going to be contradicting an existing contract because between a worker and an employee there's already i mean between a worker and an and employer there's already a contract so you have all kinds of contracts you know, in play, you know, even in your contract employment, they are always stamped like that, that look, if something's going to happen, what's going to be my fate and all of that. So what happened in the power sector is not totally different from that. You have people who, are, who had contract with the government, the government, the government is their employer, and then something's going to change because you're not, they're not being privatized ordinarily. And if you check, it shows that the paperwork are probably done. So but where the issue the comes in is, is the execution, and, that, that, and that's, where it comes, that's where the issue of sanctions of, of contract will not pay attention to what needs to be done. You know, if you find out, you know, obviously, when the, the Jenkos and the Discos were coming in, like you said, they gladly took in some employees. So when you're taking them, obviously, they are responsive for those ones, no problem. But what happens to those who were disengaged? Who, who was their 
you know, former employer, what were the terms of their disengagement? Because were they it paid? is clearly stated are the issues? that these, that these um, GENCOs, especially the generation companies, have refused to sign a condition of service rules of engagement. And they also added that these calls were also denying retirement benefits of some electricity workers. I'm guessing that, um, like you said, the conditions of service, uh, for example, if I were working for the government, I mean, even for Plus TV, when I'm retiring, I will have some benefits. Okay. It is part of my conditions of service. Now, if they have not signed the condition of service rules and regulations, how come they were handed these workers? Exactly. I mean, so there has been a problem from the get-go. Exactly. Why are we talking about this now? Why are we talking about this? Six years the, later. The, 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 the privatization couldn't have been complete if these issues were not clearly high on the house. Why are we talking about this now? Why do we have to wait till now? You guys are coming and you didn't do the due diligence. You knew the number of employees because it was government owned. It's a large amount of workforce. You knew all of that. And six years down the line, you're still refusing to sign something that had been agreed. Why are we talking about this now? Why were the public not carried along properly? Why are, we, why are these issues just, why are they not just becoming an issue, a big issue now? That's, Again, that's the thing, you know. If, so, if these workers or these laid off workers were to have a case um, or take it to court, do they have a case? Obviously, they have a case. And, and what would be the premise for the case, that the suits that they'd be filing? Like I said, they, they'll probably go to the Labour and um, to the Nigerian National Industrial Court. You know, like I said, as an employee, what you have with your employer is contract, be it government or private, you know, um, private ownership or private owned company or what have you. Now, if you're going to be disengaged, it has to be in accordance to your contract. If you're supposed to be given notice, you have to, those notes are supposed to be given to you. If you're entitled to any kind of enrollment, you're supposed to be paid. The Labor Act guarantees all of those. So if you approach the court today, you have cause of action. But these guys, I, I just pity them. I mean, someone who has, not been paid, who has been disengaged and then he doesn't even have money for a long time. Do you think you really have money to start? In? And that's, I'm sure that's the reason why they're probably not in court already. So they definitely have a cause of action if they push a cause of action against the government, against the whole process. Because their right is supposed to be well protected. Nobody can even disengage them. But in doing so, you must go according to the books. If you're supposed to compensate them, you must compensate them appropriately. Whoever is coming in must understand that, look, this is what I'm getting into. These are my responsibilities. These are the people. Uh, the deal must be well struck such that the compensation is supposed to go from the right quarter to the right people. Those are issues that are supposed to be well settled before you have any kind of proper restructuring. And so it, it, is, it is on head of that the, the new guys that came in uh, did not sign what they were supposed to sign or they trying to you know, leave their responsibility now. It, it's totally, totally unacceptable. And this leaves me with a question which I'm guessing is on everybody else's mind. Which other privatizations or private businesses have we engaged with shoddy contracts? Mm. Now, let's not forget p and I mean, that, that on its own is a different thing. But I, I'm sure that the basis is different. But if we are not paying attention to something as important as this, and six years down the line, it's coming to public understanding that the Bureau of Public Enterprise failed to address the pay of up to 2,000 disengaged workers of power holding company of Nigeria since 2013. The GENCOs have been accused of refusing to sign conditions of service and rules of engagement, and these calls are also denying retirement benefits of electricity workers. How many more of these kind of shoddy deals have been signed, and how many more Nigerians may be suffering from this that has still not come to line light? Because we can't, we can't keep having these things happen. PNID is still hanging on our necks, round our necks. It's basically what we would call busy in this part of the world. So mm. how do we try to overcome this? Because it looks like we're not, um, I'm looking for the best of words, we're not detailed when it comes to going to this kind of agreement. Right, and there's so, always a blowback on us. Exactly. So now let's get something straight. To privatize is not a bad thing. In of fact, course. more often than not, it's a good thing. The issue comes in when you do not follow the rules, you do not follow the books, you don't follow the contract in doing so. So you But a contract is supposed to be binding, isn't it? It is binding. <laughs> it is, we have just made an habit of not um, you know I mean 
if we, if we don't abide by it, if we don't obey it, what will really happen? You know, who is going to hold us? You know, that kind of mentality. That's the problem. But it is supposed to be binding. And these are the things that foreign investors look at. If they're going to look at you and say, should I come here? I, if it is going to be, in fact, it is so bad that you know, ordinarily the way it's supposed to run is that even when there is change in regime. It is not supposed to affect anything. If you are coming in, and that's another habit that we have, people just, a new government will come in and then they just yank some deals and yank some content and say, no, that's not the way we are doing it, you are turning around. But business don't work that way. Transactions don't work that way. If somebody, if, because gov governance is in continuum. So the fact that you are coming in does not mean that whatever has been laid, you know, you can just, just up out of it. And that's the issue, that's what, probably one of the issues we have with P&ID. If somebody just come and then you know, somebody just will come and say we're not doing it anymore. And then you know there's no you don't understand that even though you are government, you have legal personality and it's in continuum regardless of whoever is in power at any point in time. And so that's the issue. And it seems it's that and, and I wouldn't say they don't know these things, our leaders and those who are in, but they know they? because they, they know these things. But do they, they know have, do they know how binding and how important this is? Because we're very good at pointing fingers. You know, when the PNID uh, case came out, we were very quick to point to the uh, former administration when we know that government is a continuum and you have to take responsibilities for whatever actions are. I don't know if people, these these leaders are prepared for whatever it is. They're prepared. I mean, you shouldn't, you have no business being in the kitchen if you cannot stand to eat. You, can, you cannot be seen to be complaining. We need to, we need to be more serious in the part of the world. You cannot be seen to be complaining. You know what you are getting yourself into. You you stood out to say you wanted to, 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 to serve, and that's what it's supposed to be. And so you cannot complain and say, oh, we didn't know it was going to be this bad, or we didn't know it. And then if you look at the caliber of people who are there, the, the senior advocates, the professors, the doctors, they, it, is, it is unacceptable. If they, I think really what's happening here is that you know, they just choose the convenient part to say, look, we just, we just do what is convenient, you know, we just, we're not just accept too much, we just, because in my opinion, the, the goal is always to consolidate on power. It's never really about service, because otherwise, it is serious business, it is tasking business to say you want to step, step forward and serve and, and hold public office, because there are a lot of messes, you know, that, that, you know, that are always on ground, and then you have contracts that you must abide by, regardless of what you met on ground. And so these things are big deals, are big issues that, you know. Talking anybody, about big deals, I mean, um, I'm wondering whether the labor union is on this matter for it to have laid low for six years. And right now, national, the NLC is preparing for a showdown on December 31 if the minimum wage uh, is issue is not being addressed. But here are people who are disengaged and still have not been paid. There's not been a proper procedure. I was hoping that the NLC or labor unions, trade union congress, all of these people would be backing these guys to say, and press on governments so that these monies be paid. But uh, I mean, Labour has been tight-lipped about this only for, for us to hear that they're going to um, go on a strike, an industrial showdown. Well, I, I, I won't be quick to blame Labour. The issue of strike. But these people. The, the issue of strike is These a people deal. are part of the organised labour. I'm even talking about the. And the anything union that affects them should workers. affect Labour. True. Except true, I'm wrong. True, true. My, my point is look, in another part of the world, you can have a strike action for as low as 30 minutes, for as low as one hour. Those are people who understand the impact. Do you know how much we lost yesterday as a nation? Do you know what that did to our economy? Issues that we do not appropriate value to, 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 you know, to, 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 to scientists in this country. If you go in other part of the world, people go on strike for one hour. People come and say, look, we want, we want you to we want to achieve this, and then but one hour, nobody takes it seriously in, in this part of the world. So for them to get to the point to say, look, what we're going to do is we're going to go on strike, it has been a long time coming. And I really can't blame them because ideally, strike is supposed to be the last resort. I heard the reports earlier today. They said they've been communicating, they've been dialoguing, but they didn't take them serious. We didn't want, we didn't want them for hours now after going on strike. They called them to, for, for a meeting. So unfortunately, our government has shown that that is the only means of communication that they understand. You really can't blame them because it's supposed to be a last resort because it will affect me and you. Plus, if we were, probably had to run on generator truck yesterday. Yes, you know? and these will mean, cost a lot. Exactly. So, so, so you really won't blame them, you know, because I, I, in my opinion, I think, I think it's even patriotic that they waited this long to say, look, let's not disrupt things because this is it's only when we don't have any other options. So I, I'm happy that they have been listened to now, and I hope that the government will not push them to the wall again and make them go back on strike. Well, we're keeping our fingers crossed on that one, but uh, we'll take a break. He's not going anywhere. Uh, we will come back and we'll talk about unemployment in Nigeria and what the Nigerian Senate hopes to do 
uh, in dealing with unemployed people. Stay with us. We'll be right back.